gets back to what Paul Hewitt said at halftime about what a good job they've done beating defenders off the dribble to set up open shooters. When you beat your defender off the dribble and find an open shooter, you're not going to have empty possessions. This time of the season, there's not a lot of room for practice. Coach Ron Hunter for Georgia State said, when we do practice, it's back to the fundamentals. It's like it's a mid-October practice, and obviously it's paying off. Uh, you know what? Fundamentals are really nice, but making every shot you look at is even nicer than that. Much nicer, and that's what it, the story was in the opening half. Brian Allen now has two personals. And as R.J. Hunter gives a signal for the offensive set. Steve Smith always used to say, I'm a lot better coach when my players make shots. R.J. Hunter offline there. Now that's not a good shot for most people, but he's got the green light to take that. Sherrod Wright works baseline. Intercepted. Getting a hand in the passing lane was Manny Atkins. Another turnover and they attack again. Richardson for three. Rebound Atkins. And that happened because the George Mason defenders didn't run back. They weren't back in defensive position. That's why they gave up the offensive rebound. Devontae White in there amongst the trees. Edwards glides ahead. Allen and Edwards combining on that sideline. Arledge with an open look. Atkins was bumped. The foul is going to be on Eric Copes. Well, good hustle by Copes there, trying to get to the loose ball after that Arledge miss, but he did commit the foul. It's his third personal. You see, shot off the back of the rim. Copes reaching for it, reached his arm across his shoulder there, and then on the floor commits the foul. Big man, 6'8", 240, sophomore out of Philadelphia. As you see Kreider get back in for James Vincent, another big guy. Was originally going to go to George Washington. Um, and his uncle, Roland Houston, was coaching there, and then the coaching staff at GW got fired, and Roland Houston was hired here by Paul Hewitt. He was his first hire, and guess who was their first recruit? It would figure Eric Copes. Because Roland Houston and his uncle have been very close for years. Atkins with a baseline move. Gets his own rebound and scores. You can't give that up on the weak side that way. And I meant to say Eric Koops and his, and his uncle have been close for years. Now the lead builds to 20. Largest on the afternoon. And we mentioned in the first half that Georgia State is not a good offensive rebounding team most of the time. Tenth in the conference. They had six in the first half. They've already got three in this half. Arledge carries it strong to the glass to score. Nice move there going across the lane. He has seven on the day. Paul Hewitt says he reminds him a little bit of Sam Perkins. Left-handed, that long body, that laid-back kind of look. Not as talented as Sam Perkins, but not many people were. Coach had the great line about Arledge this week as R.J. Hunter lobs it inside. Atkins is there as a jumping jack. He said sometimes Arledge lets the action go by him like a man in a parade. <laughs> that hasn't been the case lately. Not on that last possession. He went by the defense. But he, Paul Hewitt has worked with this team about being more intense, about not being as laid back, as being more emotional. I promise you that locker room at halftime, he was into them because they have got to attack in this game, and if they just kind of come out and play laissez-faire, they're not going to be able to mount any kind of comeback. Gujanic each subs in for Copes with the three personals. R.J. Hunter all the way. R.J. Hunter has 19. He has gone him. over 20 11 times this year. My apologies, Joe. Not at all. You cannot give him any space on the court. You give him any space, he's going to create offense. Gugliani Cheech will back in, draws a double. Allen for three. Yes, sir. It's the first one they've had since about 10 minutes left in the first half from three-point range. His first points in the game. Panthers dealing with the press quite nicely. They'll be deliberate as we're four minutes into the second half with Georgia State on top 17. 15 at, at halftime, now it's 17. Ron Hunter's got to feel good about that, but he doesn't feel good about that turnover, rare one. White took it into traffic. Edwards on the crossover. The open man is Allen. Guyani cheats on the putback, not this time. And Kreider with a strong hands for the rebound. He probably should have tried to control that rather than tip it. He was too far away from the basket there to go for a tip. 
R.J. Hunter showing off in the follow for Devontae White. And again, that's extra hustle by Georgia State. Littlest guy on the floor, and he gets in there because the Mesa players are spectating because they figured R.J. Hunter would make that shot. For good reason, they keep Devontae White on the floor a lot. He's top five in the conference in minutes played, and he's having himself a whale of a game with 16 points. In the back of the zone now. Not a place you normally want a 5'10 guy. Sherrod Wright, that might have been outside of his range. He's already got four threes today. R.J. Hunter with a quick trigger. Arledge uncontested for the board. And his dad was not pleased with that shot. If they were at home, he'd get sent to his room right now. Kicking, scratching. He just not looked happy. over at his dad, put his hand out, and said, calm down. It's okay. Edwards feeds. Arledge is being held. A foul against Georgia State. R.J. Hunter and his Georgia State Panthers are in control. R.J. outside. R.J. inside. One of the finest freshmen in the CAA in years. Looking good today. The roads. Coming to the bench, he's still all over him. I think, I think he did just tell him to go to his room, Joe. <laughs> That's it. You're grounded. Yeah. It's been hard to keep this man down, though. R.J. Hunter on the verge of another 20-point performance. He won't be grounded for long. I can assure you that, especially if Ron Hunter wants to win this game. He'll be grounded for maybe a minute, I would guess. A win today for Georgia State would get them back to 500 overall, 14-14. and 14. George Mason is 15-10 and 10 overall as Vertrail Vaughns tiptoes the midcourt line. And that was a, right there. Ron Hunter was complaining that he just been misunderstood the rule. You can throw it in the backcourt on an inbounds pass. And Vitrell Vaughns didn't know it. He's trying to keep it in the front court, but he was okay even though he did step into the backcourt. Paris Bennett going to the glass, missed the bank shot. Rashad Richardson, a jack of all trades for these Panthers, picks up a rebound. It's funny to me how often players and coaches forget that rule. You can throw it back to the rim if you want. Devontae White matched up with Edwards. Atkins fumbled it away from Bennett with 10 seconds to shoot. This is the lowest the shot clock has gone, I think, in the game for Georgia State. Down to six. White off the hesitation. Kreider. Oh, at the buzzer, it'll count. He rimmed a dunk. And it went in. That's the kind of day Georgia State is having. Right at the buzzer, as you called it, he goes for a dunk. It hits the back rim, hits the side rim, and goes in. And he has seven. Guyanicic on the half hook that's too strong. Bennett on the putback. He was fouled. Bennett alert there for that weak side rebound. Guyanicic shot a seven-footer from five feet. And Bennett goes and gets that rebound, bails him out. Rashad Richardson picks up his third personal, John. And what did I say, one minute? that R.J. Hunter would be out. I think it was more like 52 seconds. He's ungrounded. Bennett at the free throw line, a 50% free throw shooter. Not very many trips to the charity stripe as R.J. Hunter returns. Joe Beninati along with John Feinstein today as Richardson checks out with the three personals. Three cheers for all the men and women in our crew. It's Georgia State and George Mason, their only get-together of the season. With Georgia State cruising by 20. Got one of the foul there as White was fighting with Corey Edwards, two little guys for the basketball. Wonderful move by Atkins, too strong on the shot. Vincent has the rebound. Another offensive rebound. R.J. Hunter rejected, goes up strong. He stayed right with it. Father can't be unhappy with that. You know, Ron told, I'm sorry, Joe. Ron told me yesterday that he thought his son was pretty good, but he's even better than he thought he was. Said at the outset of the year, he was just hoping that RJ could fit in. He's fit in pretty well. I guess so. Vaughn's off the mark for three. RJ Hunter has a dozen 20 point games this season. And as you can see, he can handle the ball when need be. He's just been, he, he can do everything. He can get it inside as we saw a minute ago. He can hit from outside. Now he's got Corey Edwards on him. That's a mismatch. Devontae White gets all the way to the rack. Devontae White's been a mismatch for everybody today. 
co-captain for this team. Stretching Georgia State's advantage to their biggest lead of the game. George Mason in white has won the last five straight up against the Panthers. They're 10 and two all time against them. Good cut there for Paris Bennett. Paul Hewitt calling a quick timeout there because every defensive possession matters now. Chance for us to take a commercial break. Georgia State has been good and lucky today. And all the back of the rim to go in, that's when you know it's your day. Georgia State has 18 second chance points to six against Mason in this game. You would have thought coming in, if anything, it would be the other way around. We've also got 10 offensive boards in the game. It's an amazing storyline, and yet still the band is in a good mood. Marcus Kreider originally signed with Providence. There was a coaching change there that led to him taking a PG year at Bridgeton Academy. And now he's a freshman on Ron Hunter's squad. Georgia State impressive today in Fairfax, Virginia. These Panthers will stay on the road, in fact. They'll spend the whole weekend in Virginia. They meet William and Mary on Monday. And then they have to play at James Madison and close at home with Northeastern. That's a tough stretch, but they think the way they're playing, they can win all four games and get into postseason play. Devontae White on a step-back jumper. He has 20. And you called it step-back jumper. Usually college players should not be shooting step-back jumpers. But I think if Devontae White did that McDonald's commercial and went and took a shot up from the moon today, it would probably go in. John, his confidence level is soaring. As it should. And it has helped hush the big crowd here at Patriot Center. Georgia State has not let this crowd get into the game. Vaughn. Too much mustard on that. Rebound for Marcus Kreider, and there's a foul on the floor. And every time Paul Hewitt tries to change something up to get his team back in the game, Georgia State seems to have an answer. 68-44. Georgia State with a couple of guys at the 20-point plateau and counting. Devontae White drains that. He's got 20. Coming to Jim Coleman. All the action of the 2013 CAA Men's Basketball Championships, March 9th through the 11th at Richmond Coliseum. Log on to caasports.com for more details. Panthers. With Devontae White dealing with some pressure from Corey Edwards. Man. Georgia State took over oh, about mm, seven minutes into this game today, and they have not relinquished the lead. And one of the reasons because it handled that pressure so well. There's a rare miss by White. Ball deflected off of Arledge's hands and out of bounds. You can see his dismay. It'll still be Georgia State ball. Yeah. That, that's the way the day has gone for George Mason. Here you see White misses wide left, and Arles just can't reach for that ball, but manages to get a hand on it, which keeps the possession in Georgia State's hands. And then he deflects the ball out of bounds off of R.J. Hunter. R.J. will restart things offensively for Georgia State. Subs coming in off the Mason bench. Holloway and Allen return. And now they switch off, and Atkins will inbound it, and they better watch out for R.J. Hunter coming off the screen. There's one of those backcourt entries to relieve some pressure. Devontae White does know the rule. Devontae White, now a junior. It was a high ankle sprain that marred his freshman year. Finds Atkins, one of the best outside shooters in the conference. Ditto for R.J. Hunter. Deliberate trips now with the basketball for Georgia State protecting this lead. Atkins drains another three. Kind of called that one. 14 points on the day for the red shirt junior. And this lead is 27, Joe. Stunning. Georgia State has never won on this court. They've only beaten George Mason twice in 12 prior tries. Both of those were in Atlanta. Lost five in a row to the Patriots. If this was baseball, Georgia State would be pitching a perfect game in the seventh inning. Allen on the bounce pass, the back cut by Sherrod Wright. Nice work. That's a nice move, but he's been very quiet since those first ten minutes when he drained those four threes. Last time he scored a field goal, John, there were nine minutes to go in the first half. 
Last meeting between these two in early March, it was a CAA quarterfinal at the Richmond Coliseum. Mason beat the Panthers by only two. Rebound for Copes. So we drift below nine minutes to go in this one today. Allen on the hesitation and the floater. Good recognition by Brian Allen there. Some confusion, rare confusion by Georgia State in their zone there. Got their heads turned. Brian Allen recognized it, went right to the basket and hit that floater. Five points for him, John. All of them in the second half. Now they put him on white to try to slow him down. Atkins, that's an extra step. He traveled. His, his foot dragged there. Left foot dragged. He's saying, no, no, no. I had it on the floor, but he dragged it just a little bit. Coach Hunter was pleading his case, too. I don't blame him for pleading. Watch. Here's, here he puts that, and then you see the shuffle. Oh, foot came up the floor, off the floor just enough. Once that heel comes up, it's a walk. Remarkably, only the fourth turnover today for Georgia State. That is remarkable. 32 minutes almost to basketball. In an up-tempo game. True. Holloway and Allen working in the backcourt. Wright goes baseline. Sherrod Wright hangs and hits. Wright has 19. 601 to cut the lead to 21. <laughs> 71 to 50 for Georgia State. Tomorrow, Al Coker and Jody Lavin Patrick will be right here at Patriot Center. Towson and George Mason will square off with the women's basketball teams take the court. 748 to go in regulation time. Georgia State has been ruthless from three. Manny Atkins. Bringing rain with that jumper and three more points for Georgia State. Cruising on top here at George Mason. This is feel like they have to win out to get one of the secondary postseason tournaments to give them a look. They played in the CIT last year. There's the NCAA, the NIT, the CIT, the CBI. 148 teams play postseason basketball nowadays in college basketball. I remember, I'm so old, when it was 39 total between the NCAA and the NIT. But they think if they can play like they did, they're playing today, that they have a chance to play in postseason again. That's a lot of alphabet soup you just went through. A they lot beat, of letters. They beat Tennessee Tech last year in that CIT tournament. They lost to Mercer, the eventual champ of that bracket. Six seconds to shoot. Sherrod Wright, skip a man. Holloway fires. And that's the first time we've seen Holloway all day. And he has played a lot. Freshman from right nearby here went to Paul the sixth in Fairfax very good shooter he misses here but George Mason does get this rebound or, yeah Atkins called for the push off there as he got the rebound excuse me just a little more than seven minutes to go in the second half Copes gets it at the low block that was a tough catch for Arledge the interior game for George Mason has not delivered the way it has in recent outings. Well, no, and I mean, they, they coming out of that last timeout, they've been out-rebounded in this game 27-17, including giving up 11 offensive rebounds. That, that just is not the kind of stat they can have against a team that shoots like Georgia State. We just showed you Georgia State's schedule. Ron Hunter, the coach, said, I'll miss the competition in the CAA, but I won't miss the schedule. <laughs>